Okay, a lot of recording on this Wednesday afternoon. Um, at the time of this recording, I just finished uh, editing and uploaded a video talking about the news that took place between Team Trackhouse and them purchasing Chip Ganassi Racing. If you want to go ahead and check out that video, I'll leave a card on the top right of the screen as well as a link in the description down below. But if you've already seen that, first of all, thank you. Uh, you don't need to do anything, you can just stay on this video. Welcome to Inside the Lines. My name is Jet Krause. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Uh, we have a lot to discuss. iRacing, Todd Gordon, and uh, we need to talk about double headers and if they're going to be part of NASCAR in the future because the ratings are out and my God, it's horrible. But let's first talk about NASCAR and iRacing. Some good news has taken place between the two companies. iRacing has been heavily involved in NASCAR as of late, uh, with them with the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series, to them opening up to more iRacing programs. Like this year, they just uh, announced the eNASCAR iRacing International Series, uh, the Coca-Cola iRacing Series getting bigger and bigger as the seasons go by, them having a huge hand in developing brand new racetracks like the street course at Chicago and much more. Well, NASCAR has announced an official partnership with iRacing to become the official simulation partner of NASCAR. Now, the deal will serve to elevate a decade plus licensing relationship to official partner status as the two organizations work closer than ever before to promote the various eNASCAR series which live on the iRacing platform while also collaborating around a number of innovation initiatives which have far-reaching implications on the future of NASCAR, including the design of new and proposed NASCAR racetracks, collaboration and technical support on the NASCAR Next Gen Race Car Project, the creation of sim racing oriented content for NASCAR digital media channels, and the use of iRacing as a training tool for NASCAR's Drive for Diversity class. But yeah, iRacing first really worked with Na- Yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know, because iRacing and NASCAR, they've been together for the first 10 years as just a license. You know, remember back in the early to mid 2010s when there was the, the NASCAR iRacing World Championship? It was a very, very niche product back then. Now, everyone in NASCAR knows about it. And it's like I said, it's growing rapidly as the years go by. To go from that to now them working with NASCAR to develop what the reconfigured Auto Club Speedway track looks like, which is set to debut, I believe, in 2022. Uh, them also having a huge part and the, uh, the development of NASCAR's next gen car, you know, and them working on other tracks. And then also with this partnership allows for iRacing and NASCAR to look at potential new areas and maybe look at brand new racetracks that they can first build on iRacing before they go into the real life product to see, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And overall, I love this idea. I love this partnership. And it, again, it's kind of funny how it all started. You know, iRacing being uh, started as NR2003 with Papyrus. Then it worked, uh, be, then it becomes iRacing. Again, a very niche project for 10 years to now them having a part on building a NASCAR car, building NASCAR tracks and all this stuff is truly remarkable. But yeah, this is a great thing for NASCAR to do to partner with iRacing, especially, you know, with them getting data on, you know, let's say in years past, if you want to build a racetrack or want to get an idea of what racetrack would work for you, you'd have to just take a gamble on it and go buy, you know, paper and statistics and things like that and actually have to build it in order to get an idea on if your track is good or not. Now with iRacing, you don't need to do that. You can just build it on the simulation, see if it works. If not, make some changes before you put it out in the real world. So yeah, happy to hear this partnership expand between NASCAR and iRacing. On now to our next story, Todd Gordon, who is currently the crew chief for Ryan Blaney on the number 12 Penske team for the Cup Series. He announced yesterday on NASCAR Series XM's The Morning Drive that he will retire at the conclusion of the 2021 season. Yeah, um... I, 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 you know, it's, it's just one of those things that you, you look at any life and there's several chapters in it. And, uh, and, you know, it's, it's been an awesome run here at Team Penske and, and really, really happy and, and fortunate to have the opportunities I've had here. But um, when you look at it going forward, this is my 23rd year and down here in NASCAR and 10 years in Cup Series and, and, uh, you know, just made a family decision that this will, this will be my last year um, sitting on a pit box. I'm, uh, I'm going to make the, the transition to something else and, and a new chapter of life. Not sure what that's going to be, but looking to have a little more family time. And, uh, you know, I've got two daughters, one in college and one in high school. And, and uh, you know, just, just blessed with the opportunities that I've had to this point. And, 
and uh, looking forward to to just making a little bit more of a priority out of the family time and and uh, you know see what 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 transpires in the future. But at the end of the season this year, I'll uh, I'll I'll be vacating the the pit box for the 12 team and um, you know just just trying to trying to make a focus on on some of the family things and. You know, it's it's those the family is important, and that's one of the things that you know through the pandemic it, it makes you makes you for everybody it makes you start seeing those things and had some of this a couple of years ago and in, in thoughts and and just trying to find the timing for it, but felt this was uh this was the right time to to go ahead and and make that transition to the next chapter of my life and uh, we'll. See. Now, Todd Gordon has been a crew chief before Ryan Blaney. He was a crew chief for Joe Logano for 2013 until 2019. During their time together, they have won 21 races, including the 2015 Daytona 500 and the 2018 Cup Series Championship. Now, on to a cool little piece I want to implement into this episode. Uh, Denny Hamlin posted this on his Instagram story a couple days ago, and many people were very confused about it. He simply just showed a video of the 2311 fire suit, and then the next clip is of him giving the shh type of gesture, leading people very confused, and rightfully so. I mean, what? Why? Why is there a 2311 fire suit? Is Hamlin retire? Or is Hamlin leaving Joe Gibbs to go drive for his own team? Like, what's going on here? But it's apparently not that big of a deal, at least not as big as everyone is making it to be. Um, if you read on the top of Denny Hamlin's Instagram post, it says a song that's playing and is Psycho by Post Malone featuring Ty Dolla Sign. Now the next clip shows an Instagram, and I believe this was posted earlier today at the time of this recording. Uh, it's a clip from the Instagram of uh, Pressa.Armani, I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. But it shows a clip of them at Auto Club Speedway with Tommy Lee from Motley Crue as a drummer in the middle, Tyla, uh, Big Sean, and then Bubba Wallace in the Root Fire Suit or Root Insurance Fire Suit alongside with Denny Hamlin in the 2311 Fire Suit. So that basically just gives it away. That uh, and it also you see Post Malone there in that video, basically saying that Bubba Wallace and Denny Hamlin are going to be in Post Malone's newest music video, which is very cool. You know, it's always nice to see NASCAR drivers, you know, break into the pop culture world, and I especially like it when I see NASCAR drivers, especially doing something or collaborating with something that doesn't have country in it. I get it. I know NASCAR and country, it, they work together. It's like beer and wings. It just mi mixes well. It's nice to see them go outside a country, you know, do something different for, for a change. I mean, this isn't the first time we've seen NASCAR collaborate with hip hop music videos, most famously Danica Patrick and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in uh, uh, Jay-Z's music video when they were in Monaco with Show Me What You Got. So yeah, it's not the first time we've seen NASCAR collaborate with hip hop uh, music videos and hip hop artists in the past, but it is cool to see uh, them breaking out into a completely different uh, region and completely different fan base for NASCAR or for uh, for yeah for NASCAR and pop culture so uh, yeah so yeah I thought it was really cool and I just wanted to uh, plug it into this episode but now we move on to ratings this is, this is going to be the final two parts of our episode let's first start off with good ratings from the SRX they had their third race of the season last Saturday night at Eldora Speedway it was a fantastic race and it showed in the rating CBS earned a 1.38 million viewers for their third SRX race at Eldora. That is the most watched viewership so far in the history of the SRX. Stafford had 1.33, Knoxville last weekend had 1.23, and this time we have 1.38. Now those are the preliminary numbers. We don't know the official final rating as of yet. We don't know the actual rating of uh, the race, but hey, biggest viewership. Again, as long as it's a good base, to start off with week one. As long as they keep on trending upwards, I think this is this is a, a big win for the SRX. So happy to see them do well in ratings. Unfortunately, NASCAR, they, oh, they, ouch. <laughs> I mean, the two Pocono races, if you watch the Pocono races, I'm pretty sure a lot of you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed both Pocono races, but apparently not a lot of people watched it. While the grandstands seem to be packed, and the uh, the camping on the infield was probably the most watched or the most packed in its history, or, or if not in a very long time. 
clearly not many people watched it on TV. The ratings are out and it is not pretty, especially for Saturday. Saturday's race, the first race at Pocono, had just a 0.9 rating, didn't even crack 1.0, only 1.45 million viewers. That is down 45% in the rating and down 44% in viewership from last year. Now to be fair, last year's race was on Fox. It was on the main network. This year was on cable network on NBCSN and Fox had a 1.6 rating and two and a half million viewers. But this race technically is the least watched cup race on any race uh, on any network in its history since at least 2000. Of course, when you exclude rainouts and makeup races. Race two, on the other hand, it did a lot better. 1.5 rating and 2.45 million viewers on NBCSN on a Sunday, but it is, that is still down a tick in ratings and down 8% in viewership from last year's race on FS1, which had a 1.6 and 2.66 million viewers. The Xfinity race also didn't do much better, down 12% in viewership, 0.67, and just over 1 million viewers on NBCSN, down 7%. The only team that won was FS1. Their truck race held on Saturday drew a .33 rating that is up 32% from last year and had just under 500,000 viewers, 30% higher from last year on FS1. Now, this is a that, that is a huge huge problem. Uh weekday races. NASCAR experimented with that last year at Kansas, I believe when they race on a Wednesday if I'm not mistaken, and that flopped entirely and I don't think midweek races are going to make a return. I don't see double headers making a return as well. As much as this race, I loved both Pocono races, and I would love for Pocono races to be at double headers as a standard in the future. It all comes down to ratings. If the if the if the ratings aren't good, the networks are probably do not want to have any more double header races. It all comes down to ratings. If the ratings are good, then yeah, they'll keep them. But at this rate, when you can't even pull a 1.0 rating. That is not good at all. And with networks, it doesn't matter how great the race is, how many people show up. If the ratings are good, networks are gonna wanna change it. Now, I do feel like there was very little promotion for the event, and I think overall, a lot of people just simply forgot about the race, because I know I did. I kind of, I'm not even kidding, on Thursday of that weekend, I completely forgot that, oh wait, this weekend is a doubleheader. I completely forgot there was a race on Saturday. So, and I am a diehard NASCAR fan. I, you know, know everything that's going on. So I can't imagine a casual fan that just tunes in when they're scrolling by wouldn't think, oh wait, NASCAR's got a doubleheader. But yeah, I don't know. The the future of doubleheaders in NASCAR is very much in question when ratings are not doing well, when they are dropping very, very hard. Now you could say, oh, it's because, you know, it was on NBCSN, it was on cable. I mean, even with Fox last year, Fox had two and a half million. The Sunday race afternoon on cable got more viewership. Fox last year had a 2.57 million viewer uh, telecast, FS1 on Sunday had a 2.66 million. So the cable did better than network television. So I don't even think if you put it on network television, it would have helped NASCAR's case. But I don't know, as much as I love double headers, especially for a track like Pocono, which I think absolutely nailed it. Uh, if you saw my tweet, I said NASCAR, I think has struck gold with having Pocono double headers. But if the ratings are not pulling in, they're gonna make changes. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know if double headers are going to be a thing of the future, but we'll just have to wait and see for the schedule for next year, which is expected to be released in late summer. But that is going to conclude this episode of Inside the Lines. Guys, tell me in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on any of the stories I talked about on this show. Do you think po uh, double headers, do you think they're going to be part of the future? Or do you feel like with ratings like this, it's probably going to be a one and done year deal? But yeah, that is it for this episode. Don't forget, of course, to leave a like and subscribe for more content. But until next time, my name is Jed from MBK, and I'll see y'all next time.